Comic Mafia. I've got a huge surprise for you today. I am so excited. I know I've been bragging about this. Today, I have the famous Mona Lott. Well, hi there. I'm so excited, too. That's why my nipples are hard. Oh, boy. <laughs> you could cut glass with those. I don't know about cutting glass, but I can hurt, put about a few eyes. That's for sure. <laughs> it's all fun and games till somebody loses an eye, Janine. All fun and games. <laughs> That's great for a robbery. <laughs> it's a new superhero, you know. There you are. Nipperella. Yes, I do. <laughs> That's why we keep ice cubes in the purse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, I have to tell everybody, this is the best dressed comic in Colorado. Oh, pshaw, this whole thing. <laughs> and where do you get your lovely outfits? Well, this one came from Cross Dress for Less, honey. That's where it comes from. <laughs> Awesome cross dress for less. Yeah, most of the time though, my husband makes my outfits. He makes my costumes and my head. He made this headdress, in fact. That is phenomenal. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I just you, you have so much different wardrobe. Every well, time I see you, you are wearing something new. You know, honey, it's torture because if you're a drag queen, you're not supposed to wear the same outfit more than once. <laughs> but ain't none of us bitches that got enough money to wear more than only wear them one time out of two. <laughs> Well, I, I love your outfits. You always look... I love your Snow Queen outfit. That's like one of my favorites. <laughs> Driven like the... the uh, never mind. <laughs> pure as the driven snow. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, but we yeah. know there's nothing pure about you, honey. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> no, but... You know, you are just so funny, and I love you so much. Now, I started following Mona Lott when she was performing at Lanny's. Is that how you lost your eyebrows? Is that the first time? Because <laughs> you follow behind me, honey, you're going to get some <laughs> air right in your face, and it ain't going to be pretty air. It's, um, it's um, unicorn parts, and it's got sparkles in it. <laughs> yeah. And rainbows. Unicorns and rainbows. And um, so Taste the shittle. <laughs> <Taste> the shittle. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I got I'm I'm feeling a little bit clint. <laughs> so how did you get started in comedy, Mona? Um well I got started in comedy because I was working in Las Vegas as a gondolier singing at the Venetian. And uh, I'd been laid off for six weeks and I saw an audition for comics and they wanted characters. They didn't want, you know, your traditional mainstream comic. And I had done this character of Mona Lott once before, and so I thought, well, what the hell? And I wrote a five-minute set. I read a book called How to Be a Stand-Up Comic, and um, I went and auditioned, and I ended up headlining the show for two years. So I was like, well, I guess now I'm a comic. <laughs> That's amazing. So yeah. you had created Mona Lott before the show. I did. Um, when I first came out, of when I first was 21, came out of class at the same time, and I saw the drag shows, I was really disappointed because all these drag queens were up there and they were just lip syncing songs and I thought that's really boring and I, I told my friends I'm like we're supposed to be gay men we're supposed to be the best at everything the best musicians the best actors I'm like this is ridiculous so I created Mona Lot and I sing live songs I've never lip synced I always sing live and I rewrite the songs to be funny spoofs. Now I've heard you sing at your bingo show. Yeah, I always do a couple songs. I do an opening song and then. Um, and I try to make it a new song every week. And then, of course, I close with my uh, finale, which you just have to see to believe. Oh, it's amazing. You have to go to Mile High Hamburger Mary's, and she has ball-busting bingo. And it's so much fun because it's not just bingo. There's jokes, and it's interactive, and it is so much fun. That's what I love. You really keep the audience engaged. Well, I really think that um, this day and age, it's being interactive is important. And that's something I learned in Vegas, too, is there's a lot of interactive shows there. And people want to party. They want to have a good time. They don't want to sit in the dark for two hours without talking. Yeah. So when I make it interactive, I think it's a lot more fun. Well, and speaking of interactive, I saw you on the Gong Show, and um, you <laughs> had the audience interacting with you. Tell the audience about the Gong Show. Now, well, that, this is a good story. That was very interactive. I um, I auditioned for the Gong Show. They did. They re brought it back with David Sell for Comedy Central, and they called me and wanted me to do it. And I thought, oh, they just want me to do one show. But I was doing a play at the time that Rita Redner had wrote, and her husband was directing, and she was part of it, and um, they kept wanting me to come in when I had performances, and I kept trying to get them to reschedule. Finally, the producer called me and said, look, I don't think you understand. Dave doesn't want you for just one episode. He wants you for the entire series. He wants you in every episode. 
So they flew me out there for a week. And I got out of the play, and uh, we shot one episode. And then that night, they called me and said we had to send you home. Oh my God! You know, standards and practices was not happy. <laughs> now, why weren't they happy with that? Uh, it was something. I don't know. I, it was something about the fact that I was um, a contestant, but they were going to use me as a regular, oh. and that showed some sort of. Like, partiality right. or you know whatever so wow i mean you know show business can be tough sometimes and it, when you yeah. get double booked like that you know but it's just it's a well i frankly think it was an excuse i think it was the size of my tits that got me off the show <laughs> standards of practice was like no way we cannot be looking at those things on on evening television in front of children no. i think david tell was really jealous because her tits look better on camera <laughs> dave was actually great dave sent me a letter and said uh an email and told me that he wanted me on the next season um, for every show if, if they came back. And of course, they didn't come back, you know. But that's incredible. I mean, to make it to that level, that be working with, you know, th that caliber of entertainment. Yeah, it's really hard work, Janine. I'm telling you, you have to do a lot of hard work to get there. <laughs> is that what it is? Like, maybe I'm yeah. not, you know, yeah. like I need to up my Yeah, game. oh my God, that reminds me of Dave Mattel so much. Yeah. I just, uh... <laughs> that one wasn't such hard work because you know he's Jewish. So I, <laughs> That's awesome. I was more like, <laughs> sorry, I, Dave. I have to say, um, I find Jewish men very attractive. <laughs> you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah? But you also like to bake, don't you? Oh, did I say that? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Why not? You Stay know? away from her oven, boys. You're not supposed to be telling my <laughs> S&M secrets. <laughs> Jewish boy, stay away from Janine's oven. Oh. You'll never survive. My name's Janine Elizabeth Wallace. So uh, my initials are Jew, actually. Did, isn't that funny? Wow. Yeah. I wear my little Jew um, initial necklace with a cross and just confuse the fuck out of everybody. <laughs> I'm super confused right now, and I'm looking right at you. So. <laughs> but honey, nobody's nobody nobody's ever you know surprised when I tell them I'm confused because look at me, I'm a man in a dress. How much more fucking confused? <laughs> Can I be? <laughs> well, what made you um, get interested in doing drag? Um, well, like I was saying, when I first saw the drag queens for the first time, I just thought they were boring as can be. And um, the first time I actually ended up doing it was I was in the gay men's course, the Denver gay men's course, and we had a retreat up in the mountains at the YMCA place or whatever. And um, so they were doing a what they called it the No Talent Talent Show, oh, and it was like... just it was crazy and fun, and and everybody different people from the group would do different acts and I thought okay I'm going to do this song that I'd rewritten and I was going to do this character and so I did Mona Lot for the first time um, I actually borrowed the clothes from a lady I was doing a play with oh. she loaned me the clothes oh, cute. and I had a cheap wig and terrible makeup because I had no idea how to put it on didn't know what to do with it but the funny thing was that we had a religious group that was up there at the same time and they were in the cabin next to us oh my god so I'm coming out and one of the guys in the group when he finally saw me at the show he goes, oh, my God. He said, I saw you coming down the stairs from the cabin, and I thought you were one of the religious ladies at the wrong place. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> he thought I was a church lady. That's awesome. You sound like me when I went to my prom for the first time. I didn't really. I had some makeup yeah. issues myself. <laughs> well, I am a church lady. I mean, at least I'm hung like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> me and Jesus, honey. Well, you know, I tell people, you know, my grandfather's name was Angel, which is spelled like angel. And his, his dad was Jesus. And I remember being at the, at the uh, cemetery with my mother. And I'm like, Mom, look at that. I'm a direct descendant of Jesus and an angel. Oh, that's... Yeah, no wonder I'm so pretty and hung like this. Ah! <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so um, one thing, too, that we have in common, we both have a love for um, divine. And... Oh, divine. Yeah, of course, divine is probably one of my greatest, you know, just where I get a lot of inspiration from. I liked her a lot for one thing because Divine had no fear. No fear. You gotta realize she was doing drag in the 60s when it wasn't something that was commercial or seen by anybody. It was really out there. Yeah. And, you know, um, even John Waters talks about one of the scenes they filmed where she's walking down the streets of Baltimore. They didn't fake that. They really had her just walking down the streets of Baltimore. Right. And the people in the background, they were honest reactions of people on the street. Right, yeah. And she had no fear at all. She's just like, screw it. And she was strutting down that street and, 
It was amazing. So I love her. I think she's great. And then tell the viewers the story about her desire to be an actor out of drag. Well, this I, is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, Divine always wanted to be an actor. Um, you know, the character she created of Divine was something that John Waters wanted, and she played it forever, but she always wanted to be an actor. And in fact, in Hairspray, she does several cameos as herself, even though she's playing Edna as Divine. Right. And um, she was scheduled to perform, uh, to be uh, on Married with Children, and she just happened to die the night before in her hotel room. Oh, that is so yeah. sad. You know, it's kind of like Tyler Perry. I mean, you know, he has his roles as a man, and then he has his roles as Medea. Yeah. And so you also play um, yourself as Todd in theater. Todd, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's no, a, I'm an he's a whole No, I started, I started as an actor. I mean, I've been acting since I was a little kid. And I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and I was a music theater major um, at the University of Northern Colorado. And so I've always acted. I've, I've been performing in dinner theater and local theater for years. Yeah, uh, you are just you are just amazing, amazing talent, and um, I really appreciate you coming on the show. I want to tell the viewers real quick: we will be at the Buffalo Rose. I'll be hosting, MC, and Mona Lot here will be the feature act, and Bag Lady Sue is going to be the headliner. And yeah. so, you guys want to get your tickets and tell our viewers where they can find you on the internet. Well, um, you can go to my website, which is monalotsdragupyourlife.com. It's a really long title, so I'm probably going to be changing that soon, but it's Mona Lotz, dragupyourlife.com. Um, you can also find me on Facebook. It's Queen Mona Lot. Um, same thing on Instagram and Twitter, Queen Mona Lot. And um, I also, we have to give a shout out to your husband, Jimmy, who makes your costumes. Yeah, Jimmy Hitsky makes my costumes. I'm trying to get him to start a Etsy page and sell these things, you know. Oh my God, so. that would be amazing. I would buy stuff from you guys. Yeah, I think there's a lot of middle-aged women in the middle of the country who want to wear something like this. You <laughs> oh, know? you know, you know yeah. we do. We're going to have all You got to go buy groceries and a headpiece and blonde hair. That's the only <laughs> way you can do it. Right? That's what I do. I mean, otherwise I scare the children. Can you see some bitch from Nebraska doing laundry dress like this? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and um, also you can get tickets. Um, when you see the tickets for with Jimmy with the Golden Girls, buy them quick because they will sell out. Yeah, he's a performer himself, so he's doing the Golden Girls at the Avenue Theater. You guys are really like a power couple. In the theater. Well, he's a power bottom. Ah! <laughs> power top. All right. right. <laughs> I'm like flip the script. I'm all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet you are. Sprayed all over the place. <laughs> Legs over here, arms over there. <laughs> you work it from every angle. Actually, I'm pretty boring anymore. But um, you know, we'll we'll work on that. I'm I'm busy now. We're gonna be doing shows and stuff. So That's I not what it says on the bathroom wall at that rest stop out on I-25. It doesn't say you're boring at all. He's a liar. Well, okay, I am talented, but... <laughs> I'm not lying. I wrote it myself. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Our secret's out. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My uh, my agent will send you my bill. Okay, great. <laughs> we got our producer in the back. This is a wrap, and thank you very much. We got tortilla wraps? That would be delicious. Dead chicken wraps? I'm a fucking whore. We're I'm still to cut mine. Okay. Can you turn mine off? Uh, that came out quite good. I think. See you I guys. Can... Thank you. I stuttered more. I can. No, you didn't.